All right, here we go. The most competitive division in the NHL, the Atlantic Division. And let's start at number eight. At number eight, it's the Montreal Canadiens. Plenty of optimism for this team this season, and I do believe they take a step forward, but not as big as they would have if Patrick Laine was fully healthy for the first half of the year. Yes, having Kirby Doc is going to help, but I see special teams being the biggest reason why the Montreal Canadiens don't climb out of the eighth position. Coming in at number seven, it's the Buffalo Sabres. A lot of the moves they made in the offseason were to address foot speed, but they may have neglected one of their other issues, and that is putting the puck in the net. I don't see them having enough offensive firepower to climb their way up the very competitive Atlantic Division. Coming in at number six, the Detroit Red Wings. What are they? Are they an old veteran team? Are they a young up and coming team? They're caught somewhere in the middle. They're not the fastest team. They're not the smartest team. Their goaltending's not overly great. I just see the Detroit Red Wings as this team somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic division. They were close to a playoff spot last year. I don't see them making the playoffs this year. I have them at number six in the Atlantic. Coming in at number five, the Ottawa Senators. They have done a lot to address the needs of this team. They have a goaltender now, Linus Allmark, someone who's won a Vesna. They have another right-handed shot who can play in the top four on defense. They have some players now up in the lineup, someone like David Perron, someone like Nick Cousins. They help facilitate what Brady Kachuk does. He doesn't have to do it alone. Not to mention Ridley Gregg has done a really good job in the preseason of getting under the skin of other players. So the Ottawa Senators take a significant jump this season. I have them at fifth in the Atlantic. Coming in at number four, the Tampa Bay Lightning. One of the biggest things that was holding back the Lightning the last couple years was the key departures on their blue line. And one of those players comes back this season. That's Ryan McDonough. Not to mention a sneaky good ad in J.J. Moser from the Arizona Coyotes. I see that blue line much improved from where it's been. You swap out Jake Gensel and Steven Stamkos, you still have someone who can score a lot of goals. The Tampa Bay Lightning make the playoffs this year, and they're at fourth in the Atlantic. Coming in third in the Atlantic, the Boston Bruins. Jeremy Swayman is now under contract. You have your goaltender. Up front, they made a couple sneaky little decisions. They brought in Elias Lindholm. Great, you have your number one center. And they brought in Mark Kastelik, a fourth line center. What does that do to this team? That moves a couple players to the wings. Pavel Zaka is now playing the wing. Morgan Geeky now playing the wing. They're better suited down the middle of the ice than they were last season. And they've added some size on the back end with Nikita Zadorov. I have the Boston Bruins finishing third in the Atlantic Division. Coming in second, the Florida Panthers. A little bit of a step back on the back end for them this season. Brandon Montour is out. Oliver Ekman Larson is out. So now you're asking someone like Adam Bokvist to jump into that position. The fourth line doesn't have the identity that they used to have last season. No doubt this will be a team that you don't want to play in the first round of the playoffs. And maybe going to back-to-back -back cup finals takes a toll on this team during the regular season. So I have them finishing second in the Atlantic this year. And yes, in first place, the Toronto Maple Leafs. The only thing that could hold back the Maple Leafs this season is if the goaltender, Joseph Wall, is not healthy and Anthony Stolarz can't carry the load. If both these goalies are healthy, they will be really good in the crease for the Maple Leafs this season because of the additions they've made on the blue line. Chris Tanev now plays with Morgan Riley. That's a great first pairing. It's the best D partner Morgan Riley has ever had. Oliver ekman Larson adds a little more stability to that blue line, some puck moving capability to get the puck into the hands of the forwards that are highly skilled and have a lot to prove to their new head coach that they can play a north-south direct style of game with a little more edge and a little more competitiveness. A lot of things can go well for the Toronto Maple Leafs this season, so I have them winning the Atlantic Division. Now, how many of these teams actually make the playoffs? This could be the year that five teams out of the Atlantic make the playoffs. If you take a look at the Ottawa Senators, who I have fifth, and the clump of teams in the Metro that could be vying for that wild card position, teams like the Islanders, the Capitals, the Penguins, if everything goes well for the Sens this year and they get off to a better start and their players like Josh Norris stay healthy and their goaltender plays well, I don't see a reason why the Ottawa Senators are not making the playoffs and we have five out of the Atlantic and three out of the Metro.